So, sorry for being a little bit late. I, I got a little bit lost and was looking for this room downstairs, so apologies for that. Um, my name is Kevin Bridges. Uh, I'm the CTO and founder of DDEV. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of one scenario that basically works with a decoupled site. Uh, it installs Gatsby JS and then pushes the Drupal site up to uh, DDEV Live hosting platform. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in because I think this is going to be pretty contentful. Um, first, I want to talk a little bit about DDEV and kind of why we're here, why we do what we do with the local development tools that we make, with the hosting platform that we make. Um, basically, our vision is simple and not so simple at the same time. It's called Advancing Developer Communities. And what we really do is we look at different communities in the open source space, in the content management space, and try and find patterns that those communities do that can be shared amongst them. So DDEV is a example of that in, in practice. Uh, we work very well with Typo3 uh, as far as the community is concerned. We work very well um, with Sulu, I believe is the name of it. Uh, there's a couple of CMSs that might be on the fringes of, of what you understand as far as a Drupal's developer that we work with as well. And we really look for patterns and, and tools and practices that are going to make sense for a lot of different people. Um, we're a thriving part of the developer community, working to advance developers and their communities beyond where they are today. Together we can paint a picture of what tomorrow can and should be. That's why we exist, that's why we make the tools that we make. Um, we are looking for a world where developers are helping each other grow stronger, build faster, and achieve solutions in a collaborative way. That's what DDEV is all about. So if you get a chance, hop on the Drupal.org Slack, join us in the pound DDEV room, let us know what you think of our tools, uh, let us know if you have any problems with them or any questions whatsoever. We're incredibly responsive and we're very proud of that. Um, what I'm going to do right now is kind of walk through a, a typical development team. It might be a little bit larger than, than an individual developer, but what we're looking for is looking to use our tools to address kind of, you know, a, a multitude of different roles. We want to be able to appeal to, you know, a front-end experienced designer, somebody that may not have as much experience on the back end, they should be able to set up sites, do things pretty easily. Um, we're also interested in appealing to the more back-end type of developer, somebody that might be more interested in APIs and data structures, that kind of stuff. And we also like to appeal to people that can do all of it. So the three roles that I'm going to talk about and, and kind of show you how they might interact with our tools are basically uh, Julie. She's a talented designer who has an eye for design and user experience. Uh, she primarily works by ingesting services to play to the end user or to display to the end user. So uh, this might be your typical uh, CSS uh, designer type that is very fluent in that space. Um, they'd rather focus on creating the front end than debugging a development environment or deployment issue. So for them, the concept of everything that we do needs to just work is very valid. Uh, Dwayne is uh, our back-end developer. You know, this is a person that might enjoy building APIs that work with server-side data and processing, has a laser focus on data structures and services, so typically this person might slow down a little bit when you put them on the front end or ask them to deal with a, a, a complex deployment issue. Um, they might need to use interfaces created by Julie to validate a service or user experience being driven by business logic and is more comfortable developing on a local environment than working with servers. Would rather the dev to deploy transition just work. The next one we have up is Anne. Uh, Anne is, uh, uh, has a thorough understanding of the front end and back end. This is your typical full stack unicorn. I don't believe anybody is really a full stack developer. Um, there's too much complexity involved in each of those layers to be able to master all of it. Um, but this person has experience extensive experience in all aspects of development to deployment pipelines, loves helping and teaching. Uh, so one of the goals of this, this particular persona is to elevate the rest of their team. A lot of times you'll find a, you know, in a small agency or in a group of people working together that there's somebody that, that is really, really good at the back end, really good at it, has a broader scope of knowledge. And one of the desires that we see a lot is that this person wants to help elevate the rest of the team. So what we do is we provide tools that allow that transition to happen very quickly. Uh, they're inspired by Julie's eye for design and rapid ideas and helps with more difficult implementation, implementations. Uh, they work with Dwayne on complex client needs in both architecture and delivery, but doesn't have the, his laser focus, um, like the much broader range of ideas, basically. Uh, they like to save everyone time with automation and all, is always evaluating new technology. 
So basically what we're going to do is we're going to introduce DDEV Local to this team and kind of talk a little bit about how that can help each of these different personas. Um, DDEV, how many people actually use DDEV Local? A few. Um, so DDEV Local is an open source local PHP development environment on Docker. It's based on Docker. Uh, it, you can configure multiple projects with unique requirements, so it's very easy to get up and running. Um, a lot of times people like to ask, well, what's the difference between Lando? What's the difference between DDEV? What's the difference between Doxel or God only knows what? Um, in reality, th there's not a whole lot of difference outside of the fact that tools like Lando tend to be a bit more like Linux might be. You can get a very broad range of things done very uh, eventually. Um, you might have to do a bit of tweaking, you might have to do a bit of configuration, um, but you'll eventually get there and it will work because it's all Docker based ultimately. Um, DDEV is more like a Mac, it's meant to just work. So for a PHP Drupal developer or, or a front end Drupal developer, um, it's going to be something that they can get up and running in a reasonable amount of time without having to do a lot of configuration. So definitely use the tool of choice, uh, whatever you prefer. Um, so the design goal of DDEV, or one of the design goals of DDEV, is to be able to check into version control the configuration files so that you can share them very quickly. So if Julie's working on a project, she can do a, a DDEV start, get, get, you know, after cloning the repository, get something up very quickly, make some changes that might suit her as far as DDEV is concerned, check those into the repository, and then the next person that comes along can check that out and get up and running very quickly. Um, so that has a huge impact uh, in an agency, or at least my experience of an agency. We used to do a lot of sites very rapidly, so being able to go back and, and pick up where you left off is a pretty key component of this type of technology. Um, you can extend DDEV commands with a robust hook system. Uh, so basically, just like Drupal used to have a hook system, you have the ability to put in your own custom commands. Um, there's a directory in there where you can drop in a shell file that says, oh, I wanted to do you know, a, a, a grunt build or something like that, um, or a gulp build. Uh, and then basically, you can extend that, so then that command would basically be something like ddev gulp build. Um, it's pretty nice. It works inside the container with developer tools like Drush, MySQL Client, and Composer. Um, so basically what that means is regardless of what platform you're running, be it Windows, Linux, or Macs, you have the ability to run Composer, run MySQL, run Drush, and you don't have to install any of that on the local machine. So that idea of it just works kind of comes back into play. So I'm just going to dive in. I, I had to record a lot of these on video because I wasn't exactly sure how the the Wi-Fi here was going to work, so apologies if this isn't as smooth as I would like it to be. Uh, but uh, we're going to go through, uh, in order to install DDEV Local, you basically need to have Docker and Homebrew already installed. Docker you can download from their website. Homebrew is pretty easy to figure out how to install. Um, but here is me failing at the videos. So give me just a sec. There we go. They play up there, but they don't play on my laptop. So basically what this is, is going through using Brew to do the install. Um, we have additional documentation for Windows and Linux. It's on ddev.readthedocs. It's very simple to type a Brew, tap, drud, ddev, um, and then install ddev. And then that takes a few seconds. We not like to play well with uh, SSL certificates, so this is a command that's output uh, the make cert install basically goes through and does a one-time configuration to your machine so that you can generate your SSL certificates and have them work. And then we went through and did a quick DDEV uh, version to validate that the install actually did work. So now that we have DDEV working, um, we're going to go through and use Composer because a lot of people do like to use Composer. Uh, it's not something that a lot of hosting providers end up supporting, but, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, we're going to go through, create a directory to store the files. We're going to uh, use DDEV to configure a generic PHP application. So back to the concept again that Composer's not already installed on this machine. Um, so we're going to use DDEV to manage that. Uh, we're going to use Composer to do a D8 install, and then we're going to uh, install, uh, use another Composer command to download and install the JSON API modules. The JSON API modules are what you need to be able to work with Gatsby on Drupal or any other front-end service, actually. And then we're going to start up the site. So 
Let's see if I can get this right. So basically, uh, going through and creating the directory, moving into it, note that nothing's there. We're going to use DDEV local to configure a generic PHP type, and what this does is it gives us access to Composer. I mean, it says that we can run a DDEV start, but we want to do a little bit more because we're working specifically with Drupal. So now we're going to use Composer to do a uh, install of, off of the reference repositories for Drupal that are Drupal Composer on GitHub. This takes a little bit of time, uh, but it may also be the fastest Composer install you've ever seen. I don't know. It's, it's sped up a little bit. I do wish it went that fast every time, but <laughs> it really doesn't. <laughs> now we're going to uh, run a similar command uh, so that we can download the JSON API modules. We're going to do a ddev exec composer require, and that's going to pull down that module set for us and put us in the right place. It's going to update the composer.json file as well. Nope. Yeah, now we're going to switch the project type that went too fast uh, back to uh, Drupal 8. So you'll see ddev config project type Drupal 8. And then we're going to start up the site. And what we'll have when it starts up is a basic installation screen. Uh, there's no uh, site profile or anything that's been installed with this. We'll have to go through and click some buttons. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, what DDEV does in the background is it runs a router basically for each site. That router manages the SSL certificates for you. Uh, so you have an HTTP and an HTTPS uh, uh, service. Um, we're going through now and doing a quick curl against the site to make sure that it is a clean site, that it has been installed. And you'll see here in the location section that it says core install PHP, so that redirect is working, uh, indicating that it is a new site. So next, we're going to take a look at an, uh, enabling decoupled umami. Uh, I don't, we're not going to disable the front end in this example, but it should be just kind of quick and simple. So we're going to install the umami site profile. We're going to enable the JSON API, and then we're going to validate the settings. So let's see. Yeah, so very simply, we go to the URL that DDEV Local gave us, uh, and we'll see an installation screen. And this may be boring for some people, but it does show the process of, of using the Drupal interface to be able to enable Umami as a default thing and then be able to enable those JSON API modules. The JSON API in the current version of Core, uh, which I believe is 8.7.7, .7, does not play well with translations. So if you go through and do this on your own, you might see some errors associated with that. You can generally disregard those, that those aren't critical errors. So now that Drupal's installed, we're going to go into the uh, settings. Finish configuring it a little bit. It's nice having the construction background noise there too, which just kind of lets you know that there's a real world out there. It's almost like it's building the site for us. I must have chosen that soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now that the uh, site's installed, we do a quick reload, and we can see that Umami's kind of up and running with the Drupal theme being displayed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to introduce uh, uh, Gatsby to this mythical team. Uh, so it's basic. Gatsby's amazing. It's fast in every way that matters. You, you can do uh, Gatsby build, deploy the raw files. Gatsby will actually read the data source, write everything out uh, into a file-based system uh, so that you don't technically need a database. Um, 
It's a static site generator. You can pull data from anywhere, including CMSs, which include Markdown and, and other data services. Uh, there's a lot of different plugins based on what you're talking to, so you could extend it to use WordPress or, or, or a number of other systems. Uh, it has something called GraphQL in there. GraphQL is pretty nice. Uh, you have the ability to uh, click through the entire data structure of the site and kind of see every piece of information that's represented on the site in a very nice browser that they give you. Um, as you get more and more into Gatsby and start playing with it, I encourage you to take a look at that because it's pretty revolutionary. Um, and Let's just get to it. Um, installing Gatsby is pretty easy. Uh, we're not going to do it in DDEV because DDEV is more of a PHP development tool. So what we're going to do is we're going to use NPM to install the Gatsby CLI. Uh, we're going to clone uh, uh, the Umami UI from the Gatsby repo. Um, I had to fork this and put it into my own repository because there's a couple of quirks in there that don't quite work in the reference of Gatsby. But Gatsby has an examples folder that basically has different CMSs, different plugins that it supports. One of those is a Drupal example um, and you can get that code directly from Gatsby. Uh, we're going to point uh, our local to, we're going to configure Gatsby to point it to the local uh, installer of DDEV local uh, so that we can pull that data and those images down. And then we're going to launch the Gatsby JS development server. And check it's playing. So, basically, going through and taking a look at installing Gatsby. Um, this video is going a little slower than I'd like it to, so I'll come up with some creative words or something. Maybe I'll do a dance. Uh, NPM install is pretty straightforward. We're going to install it globally uh, so that it's available to all of our other projects. Again, that might be a very fast uh, install. And I think that's the end of that one. Yes. Oh, did it start doing stuff? Sorry about that. And I don't have a way to fast forward this, so unfortunately I have to watch it again. While I was doing that, how about a question? Sure. I think Absolutely. I might have mentioned this to you yesterday, but uh, I don't remember the answer. Uh, so you, it sounds like you're saying you're not using the to run this particular instance right now. Right. Um, but, yeah, part of the argument, I think, behind DDEV is to match your production environment without having to screw around with your, um, your host environment. Right? Correct. And I would say, especially if you're uh, running automated tests, it would be a wonderful thing actually to have you know, your template for <coughs> running gas in the DDEV uh, setting. I totally agree. Um, the, this uh, is more focused on the server side of it, so it, the, what I'm uh, addressing in this particular presentation is the use case of a back-end Drupal developer that needs to put more dynamic language or business logic, I guess, inside of the Drupal installation and then be able to manage that specifically. This uh, it doesn't quite, it, I don't know yet if DDEV Local is a good place to manage the Gatsby install because NPM does it so well. Um, so the end result ultimately of the Gatsby site, once you end up posting it on something like DDEV Live, is going to be a series of flat files, unless you're calling dynamic services. And this presentation is more set up so that we can push the dynamic service up and then reference that as needed through the Gatsby files. Your uh, thing has gotten you to the next point, so maybe timing is perfect. Awesome. So uh, basically, what ended up happening is we went through and we did a Gatsby build. Uh, or, I'm sorry, a Gatsby develop. So Gatsby has a development server and it also has a build server inside of it. This is the development server. It shows the Umami site being pulled directly from uh, uh, Drupal. So you can see the images coming through and you can see a slightly different layout. So now we're going to do a quick install on DDEV Live. Uh, basically, DDEV Live works completely and totally with uh, GitHub right now. Uh, it's in the process of getting other CM or content 
of Git provider uh, plugins installed inside of it, but I'm going to show you what GitHub looks like. Um, so in order to install DDEV Live, um, we send you a magical URL, uh, which is not totally public yet. Um, but you go through, you install it just like you would any other GitHub application. Uh, and then once you log into the site, it's very easy to download the, uh, or I'm sorry, we're just still going through and installing uh, DDEV Live on GitHub. So there's some permissions there that allows it to read from your repositories. Uh, once you have it installed, you can go through and update your settings and basically manage it just like you would any other uh, GitHub application. So it's a little bit different from maybe some of the other hosting providers that you've ended up dealing with. Uh, once that's done, uh, you have the ability to use the DDEV Live CLI. Um, so the DDEV Live CLI uh, allows you, what we're going to do here is we're going to go through and, and we're going to essentially repeat some of what you've already seen. We're going to do another uh, uh, Composer install, but we're going to do it on the server this time. Uh, then we're going to export the database from the Umami site, and we're going to export the files from the Umami site, push those up to live so that you can see what that process looks like. And as I mentioned, this is more designed for if you were maybe one of those back-end site builders that want to, to add additional business logic into the site that you're building. Um, but the way this works... We're going to, there's probably easier ways of doing this, but just to make it clear that this is a new site, I'm recloning the Drupal Composer templates. I'm going to replace the origin for what I just cloned uh, and push it up to a new repository on GitHub that I just gave it access to. So removing that origin, uh, replacing it with one that I have control of, and then pushing it upstream. <coughs> and I'm going to wait an extra second. So now we're going to go through and tell DDEV Live to create a site. We want to pass in a branch so that we know what deployment to actually pull. We don't have to. A lot of those are extras. Um, the Composer structure basically adds that web root inside of there, so we have to tell it where to serve the stock root files. Uh, and then the DDEV Live platform is more of a declarative uh, type of system instead of an imperative type of system, which is probably what most people are dealing with, are used to dealing with. So we have to go through and check the status um, of, of things that we do on, on DDEV Live. And this has a lot to do with Kubernetes and some other backend systems. But what we're doing is we're waiting for a, a site component, a file store component, and a database component to become ready. Um, you'll see that each of these have come back true which indicates that the site should be ready to go. So we'll take a look at the site, and it should come to an installation page. So the next step is basically pushing the database up into that site. Uh, so we're going to export the local database using the dev local. Uh, we're going to push the local database to the remote site, and then we're going to verify that the database was actually imported. And here's where you get to see my typing versus the scripted typing. So apologies for the typo that you're going to see here. I'll see if you can catch it. I won't actually share the news. So here we're just going to do a quick ddev export db uh, to a local file. Uh, we're inside of the Gatsby installation that we created earlier. Pretty simple. Now we're going to push that database up to the live site so that we can see what ends up happening, or so that we don't have to recreate anything that we did locally, essentially. I type so slow. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so it's real simple. You can do a ddev live push. There's a, a number of options that you can do inside of there. I, uh, as this CLI gets distributed a little bit more broadly, you'll be able to see some of those.
So in DDEF Live, because everything is declarative, you'll note that it says backup restore. Um, so the next command is going to be basically uh, DDEF Live describe. Instead of a site, we're going to describe a restore because everything's a separate job on DDEF Live. And then we take that instance. There's my typo. I said I wasn't going to spill beans, but it's, it sticks out to me. So we'll do a uh, describe of the, the uh, job instance that we just created, and that's a very specific usage of words. It might sound a little weird. It takes about a minute to complete uh, a database import. Um, so you'll see that a, because it's a declarative system, you're defining an eventual state, and then the system reports on how long it takes to achieve that state over time. So you can check on different components that you do, uh, and some of these can get pretty complicated. I believe one more should give us uh, what we're looking at is the status field down at the bottom. So now that database is finished um, and we basically just need to get the files up there. So we're going to move into the files directory, run a very similar set of commands. We're not going to work with a large archive or anything like that because there's kind of an rsync type of process that ends up happening. Uh, so we have the ability to Did I go too far? There we go. So move into the files directory. Uh, you'll see that it's already populated with the install that we did previously. And then we're going to push those files up to the live site. And then take a look at that job ID that was generated just so that we can get a status of it and give you some indication of when it's going to be completed. So basically telling it to push the files from the current directory, uh, that goes through and does uh, an update of the files. And unfortunately, because of my uh, typo, or I just didn't have the time to fast forward this part, so you get to see this part in real time from the hotel Wi-Fi. which is great because now we get to see all of the wonderful twig PHP files that get put into place that still mystify me to this day. Uh, it can run Apache. Uh, right now, this is all based on Nginx. Uh, yeah, yeah well, the HD access files are gener auto generated by Drupal. Um, and it, 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 we have Nginx rules in place that pay attention to that in some capacity. So that's done. I should be able to copy the uh, restore job ID and kind of see how that ended up. And again, apologies for typing so slow. Yeah, uh, I promise you have about 60 to 90 more seconds. Uh, so that's basically completed. Um, and then we should be able to go up to the URL that we have for the DDEV Live site and see that the Mommy site there. Um, it is basically time 
to stop. Uh, so basically, let me go over what we accomplished. Uh, really quickly, we introduced a set of tools that allow developers, uh, front-end people, and back-end people to kind of work intermingly, or I don't even know if that's a word, but I'm going to go with it. Um, so Julie can do, you know, whatever she needs to do and, and, and be able to, to have a lot of tools available to her. We have a DDEF share command in there, so if she wants to share it quickly to test it on a mobile device, that's a really nice thing. Uh, she can use Ngrok SQL Pro. Uh, Dwayne can help out, Anne can help out. We have a lot of resources for DDEV. Uh, basically, Mike Anello does a really wonderful training class. Uh, we have a book out there in case you're interested in taking a look at that. Uh, there's newsletters. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Drud. Uh, take a look at, like I said, that Slack channel and Drupal.org Slack. Uh, and if you get stuck with anything, take a look on Stack Overflow. There's a DDEV tag out there that should help out quite a bit, but Slack's probably the best place to go. Gatsby has a lot of really interesting resources as well. Uh, they have a great newsletter. You can follow them at Gatsby, uh, Gatsby JS. Uh, they also have a Gatsby tag on Stack Overflow, and they do run a Discord channel instead of Slack. So if you get interested and want to participate with that community, highly encouraged. And then become a part of the conversation. If you like what you saw here, uh, stop by the booth downstairs. Uh, we'll be happy to talk to you and maybe walk you through some more specific questions. But thank you for your time, and enjoy lunch.